Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing today? You can unmute yourself. Let's have a little conversation before we start. How's everybody doing? Pretty good, Gerald. Doing pretty good. Good. We all able to hear all of that good knowledge that was still spewing by the best uh, motivational speakers in the world? Yes. So before we begin, I want to ask you a favor and go ahead and get a pen and a piece of paper and make some notes because we're going to be dropping some jewels today. And it's all about the entrepreneurial mindset. And these are things you definitely want to jot down, save, look at over and over again. And I'm also at, at the second half of it, I'm going to show you how you can do better when it comes to your Zoom calls and your phone calls with particular prospects that you have. So today is going to be that kind of training. We're not going to go over how to build your Catly account, how to do none of that stuff today. It's all about the mindset and the strategies of how to go ahead and communicate with your prospects, which is very important because it's one thing to get the lead, it's another thing to close the deal. We all could agree to that, right? Yes. Okay. So after every segment, there will be a Q&A. Maybe I'll take maybe two or three questions about that particular segment, then we'll move on. Because I know how it is when you have a question, you got to wait all the way to the end of the webinar and then you forget, which is why you should write it down. So if I don't call on you for that time, you could definitely ask for it at the end. And this is going to be about an hour altogether. Um, the first part being my um, introduction and, and, and uh, Q&A. And then, of course, the follow questions afterward. Does that, does everybody have that? Yes. Yes. Awesome. OK, so we're going to start by defining what exactly is an entrepreneur. Um, anybody could chime in at this time. What is your definition of an entrepreneur? Self-employed business owner. <clears throat> OK, what else? Anybody else? Multiple streams of income. Okay, okay. That's more the fi financial entrepreneur. Okay. Okay, if there's nobody else, an entrepreneur in our kind of field is a leader. Because we are recruiting people into our business, because we are helping people make money, because we're helping people grow, we are considered a leader because if I have a downline, I have to teach them the system to make money, the system to engage to, in prospects, the system to build their business. So I am absolutely, first and foremost, a leader. And what do leaders do? They do it first. You can't tell. I'm going to use myself as an example. I'm a martial artist. I'm a martial arts instructor. I've been teaching for the past 25 years in Aki Jiu-Jitsu. That is my love, that is my passion. I can't take one of my students and tell him to go into a tournament and not be there first and not go through the tournament first. That's just being hypocritical. So as an entrepreneur, you have to go through it first. You have to go through all the pitfalls. You have to go through all of the no's. You have to go through all of the things that entrepreneurs don't want to do. And this is why, because once you go through it, you develop thick skin. With that thick skin, you develop knowledge. With that knowledge, you become a giver, which is the third thing that an entrepreneur is, is a giver. People are coming to us because they have a need. Either it's financial, maybe they're concerned about their families in terms of their funeral arrangements. There's something that we have to provide as an entrepreneur, which means we have to give of ourselves, of our knowledge, of our experience. And also, as being the giver, we also offer opportunities for them to own their own business, for them to own their own money-making source. So with that being said, they will only do what we do, which means if we're a leader, we have to show them what we're doing, do what we're doing, 
and request for them to follow suit to success. Because as a leader, they're assuming, which because of the kind of business that we have, they're assuming that we are successful and they want to follow success. Remember this adage, success always leaves clues. I'm gonna say that again. Success always and every time leaves clues. If you are not following those clues, you cannot then show those clues. So you cannot be an entrepreneur because you cannot develop another entrepreneur. Just like the martial arts. If I was a white belt, I can't teach um, somebody how to become a black belt. That's just ridiculous. I have to go through the pain. And there was a lot of pain. Oh my God, a lot of pain <laughs> as I was going through the ranks of martial arts, um, getting thrown on the floor, you know, joints being messed up, you know, getting punched in the face, kicked in the throat, all the pain. But I had to go through it because I know that my future, stu my future students are going to need that knowledge, are going to need my experience when it comes to becoming higher and higher ranked until, the, until they achieve the level of black belt. Now that's that segment of what is an entrepreneur. Are there any particular questions, comments, or concerns about that? I'm not that good of a teacher. There has to be some questions. <laughs> so, so I heard you say leader number one, Gerald, and I heard you say number three, giver. Did I miss something? What was number two? Number two was do it first. Do it first. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Okay. We're going to go through the next segment, which is you must go through it. We're going to elaborate on number two. Now, as somebody like me, I go to the gym every single morning. Okay, I'm lying. I go to the gym <laughs> four to five mornings a week, right? And my goal is to get bigger. I like, I like size. I like, I like that, you know? And I know that if I don't lift heavy weights, I'm not going to develop bigger muscles. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Good. So with that being said, with that mindset in mind, I want you to understand this. If you're not going through adversity, your level of knowledge will not increase enough to become a good leader. So you have to 100% go through and make all the mistakes that you can, because that's how you will learn how to be a leader. And this is why I'm going to guarantee right here, right now, you can quote me on this. I'm going to guarantee that the people that you bring into our business are going to be making mistakes that you have went through. Either they maybe not getting as many leads. Maybe they don't know how to talk to a prospect. Maybe they kind of get kind of nervous bringing up the subject of death or, or how to uh, be in a position to help people when their time passes. Guaranteed, they're going to go through what you're going through, if not more. So you have to go through that muscle building when it comes to your knowledge and your spirit, because then you could be confident enough to guide somebody in the right direction and give them that seed that they need to overcome that particular uh, adversity. It's very important for you to go through it. You got to get that entrepreneurial tough skin so that you can then be a better giver. Knowledge is key. No, it's not. Knowledge is only key if you utilize it correctly. Now, you learning by your adversity gives you the knowledge, but that doesn't make a difference until you use it to help your team. Once you are able to do that, you will see that because you went through it, you taught your team the adversity and, and the, um, uh, the overcome, how to overcome that adversity, you'll see them follow suit and them doing the same thing and the same thing so that almost on autopilot, your business grows because you set the foundation of that knowledge. Hope that makes sense to everybody. Now, as you go through that, you must understand that every entrepreneur on a daily basis 
always wants to evolve. Evolution is how you become a better entrepreneur. Through evolution, it's how you make more money. Through evolution, that's how you help more people. And if you don't evolve or seeking ways to evolve, then you're gonna be stagnated at the bottom. Now, with me being in the business, you guys know that I give you my one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions. You can do that anytime you want to between hours of 10 and five, Monday through Friday. I'm available to you 100%. However, there is a caveat. If I have given you the step-by-steps to do your Cadley account, if I've given you the step-by-steps of how to uh, post on, on social media, if I've given you all of that stuff and you have not went to those posts to learn how to do it yourself and you come to me to do it for you, you're doing a disservice to not only yourself, but to the future team that you're going to have. Because like I said before, they're going to follow suit. What they're gonna do is call me to do what they should know how to do through your experience. I don't mind helping anybody, but as we grow, there are gonna be more and more people that are going to need my help that have already done the steps through the um, materials that I've given you who just need a little bit of tweaking here and there so that they can go ahead and build their business. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not gonna help everybody. I will help anybody who makes the appointment, but I wanna get to the point where you're calling me or setting an appointment with me so that we can talk about how to strategize your particular business to your target audience. That's the meat and potatoes of why the one-on-one -on -one sessions with me are so important because I've been through it, because I know how to engage in conversation. I know what to say and what not to say. And if I could share that with you, depending on where you are in terms of your target audience, then that'll make your business a little bit better. And as an entrepreneur, that's your job to do that with your team as well, okay? So I'll take questions about that particular segment now. I guess I'm a good teacher. <laughs> now, another important thing about being an, an entrepreneur is not only do you have to do it first, but you have to do it first. You have to do it well first. For example, I'm a martial artist. I'm gonna use Bruce Lee as an example. We all know Bruce Lee is arguably the best martial artist this planet had, has ever seen. With that being said, you know who Bruce Lee is, you know his status, you know he, he can fight. <laughs> he, he, he's the founder of Jeet Kune Do. He is a leader. If he were to open up a school, if he was still alive and opened up a school in Jersey, I would be the first one at the door with my money. Listen, teach me because you, you have done this, this, this. I know that you're a professional. I know that you are that guy. And I know that you are the person that will get me to my next level when it comes to teaching my students. This is what you have to do with your business and with your entrepreneurship. You have to achieve certain things because like I said before, success leaves clues. So because you've succeeded in certain things, because you are making a certain amount of money, because you are in a certain rank within our, our business, people will look at you and say, you know what? I wanna work with that person because that person is making moves and I wanna do what they do. So it's very important for you to be a success within this business. So you are looked upon as a leader. And at that point, people will come to you almost to the point where you don't even have to market the business anymore. Because once they see all your achievements, I, yep, I wanna go with that guy. I wanna go with that girl. That's, that's who I wanna mentor me. And that's how, that's why you have to build your muscle. That's why you have to go through adversity. That's why you have to engage in achieving each and every day. Is that possible? No, you cannot achieve you know, success every single day in terms of money or building your business. However, you can achieve by educating yourself, reading books on marketing, reading books about our um, industry, um, keeping your ear to the ground to hear more uh, developments about our industry. 
Because once you get to do that, not only will you be much more knowledgeable of our industry, but the confidence level will just exude from you, whether it's on video, whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person, because you have that knowledge, you can walk and strut because you got it. For example, Denzel Washington, arguably one of the best Black American uh, actors this world has ever seen. You know that when he walks into a room, all eyes on him because he walks in that knowledge that he has. He walks in that experience that he's gotten. He walks in the adulation that people have given him. He walks as one of the sexiest men alive, according to that magazine. I forgot the name of the magazine. <laughs> so he is that guy, chest out, walking tall, beautiful woman, great kids, great life. With that knowledge, you can, you should be able to walk into a room and people will say, there's something about that person that I want to know. What is, what is up with that person? And that is you. Because you took the time to develop. You took the time to get your acronym when it comes to your business certified right here, right here. You cannot walk in confidence without knowledge of what you're walking confidence about. It just can't happen. And that is the quintessential piece of the end result of being a proper entrepreneur. You must diligently learn every aspect about our business in order for you to confidently go up to anybody and tell them about this great service and tell them how if they join us, how much money they can make by helping other people. So with that being said, I'll take questions about that second or comments, whatever you wanna say. That's some good water. If you don't know, pure life is some good water. So Jeff, if, if I heard you correctly, uh, another way to just simplify, you know, you know, all the nuggets you threw out there is that we're, we're, ser we're servant leaders. Not only do we have to go through it ourselves, but we also serve the ones that are coming behind us. Definitely, without a doubt. Th that is why you have to build yourself. Because just like you, um, if you, when you were fresh into the business, you knew nothing. It wasn't until people like Wilhelmina and, and the other guy that does the, um, the webinars taught you how to do things. That the more knowledge you got, the more positive you are about going out, sharing the post that I give you so that when you do get that lead, you know how to talk to them. It's all about education. Now, knowledge is not power. Let's, let's, let's dissolve that right now. Knowledge is not power. The use of knowledge is powerful. Let's say that again. Knowledge is not power. Usage of that knowledge is powerful. Because you can read all the books in the world about our industry, but unless you put it to practice and share that knowledge with other people, it just stays in here and it doesn't do anything. It's like a, it's like a bullet in a gun is not powerful if it stays in there. When you shoot onto a target, not anybody, a target, <laughs> that is when the power becomes apparent. So imagine your, your knowledge as bullets. And when you tell somebody something, you're giving them knowledge, which makes it powerful. Now, as, uh, as leaders, sometimes I don't have all the answers. I'll admit that first and foremost, I don't have all the answers. I'm gonna share a story. This happened um, just, I wanna say three days ago, had somebody call me who was interested in joining the business and very excited. I said, listen, here's what you need to do. I want to have your business done correctly. So a minimum of four people you have to have in your own plan to start the business correctly. He immediately made phone calls right then and there. He called a guy named Sam. He called a girl named Sally. I mean, he, he, was, he was on it that night. We're like talking nine o'clock to by 11 o'clock. He's making calls. But here's, here's, the, here's the, the crazy part. He called one woman who's older, who knew everything there is to know about the insurance industry. She asked me certain questions about our business. 
Now, as you guys know, I'm maybe three, four weeks into the business. So I don't know a lot. Even though I went to all of the webinars that we have, still a lot of stuff she was asking I didn't know. So with that being said, I want to show you how to prepare for every single phone call you get. Before you make the phone calls, you must do two things. Have two things right there in front of you. One is the PowerPoint presentation that has everything that has to do with our business. You have to have it on, if you could print it out, that's great. If you have it on your computer uh, screen, that's great. The second thing you must have is the 40 second um, sales pitch. Print it out or on another computer where you can see it right away. Because there are certain questions that because we're fed, fed so much information on our webinar, we're not gonna retain. And almost guaranteed, those are the questions that you're gonna get during that phone call. So if you have, so if you have both, the one, the PowerPoint presentation and the 40 second sales pitch, you're, on, you're gonna be in the good standings. And I say that to say this, the woman that spoke to me had so many questions. She wanted to know how long we've been in business. Now we all know we've been in business for 70 years, but we've only been in business here, in the, in here for 16. So she wanted to know that. She wanted to know the address of our office. I didn't know that, but I had the PowerPoint of presentation, so it was right in front of me. She wanted to know uh, certain things, about our business that unless you really pay attention and write notes on our webinar, you're not going to remember. But because I had it in front of me, the PowerPoint presentation, I just scrolled up and I was able to answer questions, which made me look like the professional entrepreneur that I am, because I didn't have to say, um, I don't know, uh, let me uh, let me get back to you, because she was she was on her game. She was she answered. She asked with confidence. She was older. She gave me her credentials right off the bat. So it was more of a challenge at that point. But I was like, okay, fine, it's right there. I don't really have to think about it. But I guarantee because of that situation, I know more about this business than I did prior to that, right? So in short, when you're on the phone or on a Zoom call with a prospect, make sure you have the PowerPoint presentation uh, either on the screen or somewhere where you could get to it right away or, or and, the 40 second sales pitch. Now, before I continue, does everybody have the 40 second sales pitch or the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Yep, okay. Now, is another- Is idea what the PowerPoint of presentation is? I have a lot of information here, so I just need to know which one it is. Uh, the one that they use for the, um, for the Zoom calls. The Monday, Wednesday, Friday Zoom calls. If you don't have it, I could possibly put it in the chat for you to download. Would that help? Is it actually the benefits, Joe? Is that it? No? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. But just to make sure, let me go ahead and put it in the chat for you to download the correct one, OK? All right. Give me two seconds. Just to make sure I send you the right file. Give me, I'm sorry for the wait. There it is. Okay, it's uploading now. And there it is. If you go into the chat, you could download it right now. Okay. 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 
that is the one that I used. Uh, that's the one that I had up when I was on the phone with uh, my particular prospect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's the setup for when you're with a prospect. Now, as an entrepreneur, you are going to have to do some research, and we already went through that. Now, we're going to talk about our, our, our webinars, our Zoom webinars. Now, when I was uh, with another company, we had a rule that if you were to attend our webinar, you cannot use an avatar. And this is the mindset behind it. If you invite a prospect to the webinar and they see your avatar, then like I said before, they'll do what you do and they'll use their avatar. This is the negative effect of doing that. As the person is talking about our amazing job opportunity, I'm sorry, um, uh, career opportunity, about our services, mentally, if somebody is receiving that information and they're looking at everybody else and they just see pictures, there's no emotional attachment to it. So what happens is, eventually they're gonna to get to the point where they'll hear it, but they'll maybe doing dishes, they may be doing, I, I, I literally saw on one of our webinars, somebody doing laundry, like folding clothes in, in, in front of the camera while, while our webinar was going on. And I, I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? Because when you invite somebody, you want to put our best foot forward. You want to be in, 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 uh, intensive. You want, be, you want to look in the camera. You want to give your energy. When there's something that's really cool that he says about either making money or doing the ranks, you want to give a clap, you want to nod your head and you want to feel, you want, you, you want your guests to know that this is a team of people that I could see. There's movement, there's action, there's emotion. You really want to put that out there because we're already in the negative because we're doing it on, on, on Zoom. There's no physical interaction. There's no sitting across the table for somebody one on one, sipping a cup of coffee at Starbucks, building your business. So. As a rule, every time you see me on a Zoom call, that's why I am not behind an avatar because I want people to know that if they sign up with me, they're gonna do what I do and they're gonna bring that emotion to our Zoom calls. Now the Zoom calls are great, but imagine if a new person comes on and they see all our beautiful faces, smiling, laughing, clapping, you know, being excited. Do you think that's going to have an effect on whether or not they want to join our group? I say, heck yeah, definitely. Anybody have any questions about that? Or comments or concerns? So you're saying, Drill, the pictures that we put up of ourselves, is it good or not good? No, the pictures are great. I mean, I'm looking at now, you know, I, I, I'm not too fond of the blue, the blue flower because you don't see the person, but that's okay. just, but what I will say is that pictures are good, but video is way better. Right, I understand. When, when people are looking at you and you're excited and you're smiling in front of the camera and you're excited about what's happening, people are gonna notice that and people are gonna feel almost compelled to show themselves so that okay. we can see their reaction. So we can actually engage with them. Maybe not directly, but because we're interacting, physically interacting, it does make a difference. Okay. Now, second thing about the Zoom calls. With that being said, if you invite somebody to our Zoom call and after the presentation is done and there are the Q and A's and or whatever, I would personally do this. If I invite somebody, I would acknowledge them for being on the Zoom call because they made a commitment first. We had a conversation, sorry. First they saw our ad, they reached out to us. They had a conversation and they committed to coming to a Zoom call and they showed up. How many of you, just by raising your hand, um, have been through a thing where they've been through all the, all of the, the motions, they committed and didn't show up. How many, how many people have been through that? Just put your digital hand up. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So 
if they have made the commitment to show up and showed up, you got to shout them out. Something as simple as, hey, this is Joe. Listen, really quick, I just want to give a thanks to Mario for showing up for the Zoom call. And I think he's going to do amazing things in his business. And I'm glad that he's here learning about it. And I just want to give him a shout out. Something along those lines. Then what happens is this. They are on the Zoom call. They see all of our energy coming out. And then the person that invited them thanked them publicly for being a person of their word and showing up. Do you think somebody's going to be like, oh, I'm not joining that group. They shouted me out. I don't, I don't, know. No, I don't want that. No. Everybody loves to be acknowledged for whatever. So if you acknowledge somebody for showing up, believe me, when you get that uh, phone call or when you call them back uh, uh, after the, uh, the Zoom call, they're going to be excited because you took the time to let them know that you meant enough to us to show up and be a person of your word. Can everybody agree that that would be a very powerful thing to do? You can unmute yourself and say yes, because that's very important. I, I need a verbal response to that one. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Okay, um, for the most part, that is the, the end of this particular um, uh, mindset. <laughs> A little, little brain dead, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the end of this particular segment. Now, it's open to Q&A for discussions about whatever we talked about, except how to do your Cadley and all that other stuff. Remember, I said we're not going to do that. It's just going to be about the proper mindset. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or add-ons that you want to share with the group here, please go ahead, um, raise your hand. I'll call on you, and we'll have a little conversation. Robert, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, actually, thanks for your, your feedback, uh, Gerald, in terms of um, putting up the pictures, because I've definitely been one who's guilty of not putting pictures up on my um, profiles and different things like that. So I, I take, take, took note of that and I was like, you know what, he's right. And, and also more importantly would be to do videos. Only reason why I'm not doing a video right now is I'm sitting here with the kids and they have, having uh, afternoon snacks and dinner. But, um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I appreciate, pre appreciate your feedback and we're definitely, um, want to make sure I approve upon that going forward and take a posture of um, when we're on these calls to be more engaged and video and things like that as well. well. Another thing, as you said that, another thing that, that I kept into my mind, this is a business first and foremost. And if you work for somebody else at nine to five, you would follow their rules and do what they want you to do, right? So with that mindset, being that this is your business, you have to set standards for how you conduct your business. If you know that between 7.30 and eight o'clock, we have a Zoom call, it will behoove you to be in a room where you are not disturbed, there's no background noise at all for that one hour, which is not a big thing to ask to build your business. If there is a room, a closet, someplace where you can be, where there's gonna be no distractions and no, um, and no disturbing, that's where you need to be because you want to be totally focused and engaging and learned when it comes to everything that we're going to go through uh, on all of our meetings, whether it's the cup of coffee, whether it's the uh, 730 um, overall meetings, or whether it's every Sunday training with me, get into that habit of, okay, this is my business, this is what I need to do, and this is how I need to do it. And remember, your people that you bring into the business that you partner up with will do what you do. So if you're not in a place where you can be totally focused, neither would they, because that's giving them the license to do the business wrong. And you don't want that. So you have to be diligent in conducting business as if this is a million dollar business, because let's face it, it can be a really lucrative business if you do it correctly. Okay. So any other comments, concerns, or shares that you want to give to us with your knowledge about what we're doing today? 
Jill, I wanted to ask you something about the um, the forty minute. Uh, what is it? Forty second sell yeah. pitch. Mm -hmm. um, now, with the forty second sell pitch, is that the one with the sure for life on it, where you ask questions like what um, what you like to ask? Uh, gonna, I'll send it to you now. Okay. If we're not on a computer drill, we can't see those, what you're putting in in the chat. Is that correct? Um, I think if you, hmm. I, I, I really don't do the Zooms over the phone, so I'm not sure, but I think the the, uh, the link would show up on your phone. You could download it to your phone, and then from your phone, you can email it to yourself so you could open it up on your computer. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting anything in the chats, but. Uh, okay. So what, what you want to do with that is, um, Put your email in the chat and I'll email it to you. For those of you that are on your computer, I just uploaded the um, the full text in the chat. Now you wanna to go to the last page. That page is the 40 second sales pitch. And once you memorize that, when you're on the phone with somebody, you'll definitely be able to answer particular questions that they might have. Along with the, um, with the research that you're doing on your own about our industry, about how to be a better entrepreneur, how to be learned, so that you can work with that confidence and talk with that confidence so that people understand that when they talk to you, they're talking to the bomb of the industry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna put people on the spot. Sandy, you've been here and you're one of the leaders in this whole thing because I see how you how you be marketing. I see it. Let me have some comments, some feedback, some concerns. Talk to me. Hey Sandy. What? All right, so we'll go to the next one. Kathy, I'm going to pick on you for a while. <laughs> Talk to me. What, what what did you think about today's um, session? What did you think about what do you want to contribute? Talk to us. Uh, <clears throat> it's Kathy Mosby from Dallas, Texas. I really enjoyed the information quality, good information, knowledge. Uh, just <clears throat> learning the business and just taking in all the education I can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't forget that um, with that, you have to understand everything about our business. I mean, even our competition, not that there is any because you know, we're the bomb, <laughs> but there are people that are gonna be competitors. There are, there are funeral um, directors who are rejecting this and you have to know how to overcome those questions that they might have. And the more you know about our business, and how they can benefit by, by teaming up with us, the better you'll be able to close. So yeah, definitely knowledge is super powerful and super key, especially in our business. So thank you for that. Hey, right, Jerry, I don't want... Go ahead. No, Sandy, go ahead. I see you back. Yeah, I was there. It's just getting un, un, unmuted. I know it's hard for, to believe I can get muted. But listen, no, Gerald is good and he's correct about knowing the competition. I, op I do um, business plan writing and that was one of the first things I got into. In fact, I pulled that section out just for this business that I can share with people and I'll share it with Gerald. And there's some areas that I'm going to have to get explanation on, but it's really good to know who, what is in the industry. Like he said, there's no one like us right now, but what's in the industry and terminology and what Gerald is saying, if you'll see me nod in my head, he's telling you the truth. He's good. He is so good in marketing. He's good on his words. He's good with the videos. I'm getting compliments from people that are watching 
but they have an active, but you have to know that it takes seven, they have to see it at least seven times before they're going to start acting upon it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, yeah, and the thing is, to be in front of people as many times, which is, which is why I give so much content on, yeah. on the board, because the more people see that logo, the more curiosity will be, oh, okay, I keep seeing this damn thing all over the place. What's the deal, right? So the more you feed the beast, and I always put that hashtag, feed the beast, the more people are going to be curious, and then they'll start engaging. It's called the compound effect in business or in business marketing. What happens is people start seeing it, and it sticks in the back of their head as something they may or may not be interested in. But then when they see it again on another platform, the curiosity increases. When they see it on the fifth or sixth platform, the image of our business is that we are so large that we are everywhere. And that's what we want. That's why I, I, I always ask you to feed the beast because the more we're everywhere, the more people are gonna be like, listen, this business or this company, it must be huge because they're spending a whole lot of money on advertisement. They don't know that we're just facing a lot. That's all. <laughs> so that is why and, and, and Sandy is perfectly right. People have to see this six, seven, maybe eight times to even make that one decision to check out our website so they can see the video and then we go ahead and make an appointment with us. So Sandy, thank you for that. Okay, Robert, you uh, you were gonna say something earlier? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes, I was gonna ask, um, you, you stated uh, that, that there are funeral directors that have rejected this. Um, when you've had that experience or when someone shared that experience, you know, what, what actually happened? I, I asked the question because this week I actually have two upcoming meetings with some funeral directors. So I just want to be prepared as, um, and also I noticed that you're recording today's session. Will we be able to get a copy of this or have access yeah, I'm gonna, to it? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make a, um, a website and share with you guys the links so everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. And I did also send you that chat. I don't know if you received that. Yeah, just I double check. Kind of okay, got it. my words, so I have your email. Mm -hmm. I'll do okay, that. As great. So, so, so the question is um, how to overcome those arguments or funeral directing funeral directors not wanting to participate in what we're doing. Correct. Uh, what 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 has come up? Um, you know, I, I haven't had those objections yet. So, um, just kind of preparing myself for what they may say or what the issue may be, if they're, what the issues were. Sure. Okay, so there's a tactic when it comes to uh, dealing with, with people, professionals like that, and it's called, and the, the Arbor uses it all the time. Uh, what's the word? Um, when they go out and get information, what, what is that? Um, research? No, not research. Uh, Could could I inject a thought real here quick? In one of our meetings this last week, they they said, and it, this gave me an idea on how to open up the conversation. They said that what happens when they go into an area, as Shore for Life goes into an area, they're going to call, when they're going to, they're looking for funeral directors that want to work with them for the, uh, and pay you know, to the average pay for that area. Do you remember he hearing that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here's, here's an idea on how to start a conversation. Are you looking for more business? Are you familiar with the Shore for Life? Because we've got members coming in your community that will need funeral director services. And a Shore for Life is wanting to make certain they know funeral directors that can work with them. Could we talk to you a little bit about that? Do you not think that would open up the door for more conversation? Yeah. Because you're telling them that there's a company that's paying funeral directors for providing the services. And if they haven't heard of a share for life, wouldn't they want to be the first to know? Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. So the, um, thank you for that, Sandy. Thank, right. thank you. Um, what I do, I always believe in getting intel. That's why I was trying to, the word I forgot, intel. <laughs> Right, because we could come and say, "Hey, um, we have a way for you to get paid more. We have a way for you to do blah 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 blah." But if that's not what their uh, hot spot is in terms of what's missing in their business, we're mm -hmm. just gums, and we're not we're not getting that that connection. I would say, 
have a just a conversation with them, find mm -hmm. out what they're lacking in their business, Pain and point. then how we can help. Because then you're targeting right the, the, their, their sore spot when it comes to what they need in their business and what may be missing in their business. Once you get that, you can now gauge the conversation to fixing that problem. So the opener, what Sandy said, yes, we can get you more money, we can do X, Y, and Z, but what is it specifically that you would, that's hurting your business? Because they may be making a great amount of money. So making money, eh, they got that array. You know, they may have a, a, a large clientele. Okay, we get your clients. Eh, I got enough clients, you know? So to find out what's hurting their business or what their business is missing is how you engage them and get and be able to solve that problem for them through our system. So Intel is always key. Does that answer your question, Rob? It does. <clears throat> it does. So, so my takeaway from this, that in terms of the notes that I'm writing down, and Sandy, thank you for that. Um, it's pretty much like you said to get the intel by probing them and getting really fun. Like as Sandy said again, their pain points. What's 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 troubling them in their business? And I, I would think that one of the top things is when they get approached by families who don't have adequate coverage and need them to um, perform a service till they get a loan or they you know, have to raise GoFundMe money or whatever the case may be, but those would be the type of pain points that we're trying to help solve. Right. And with them in conjunction with a short for life cannot be a blessing to those parents or those families that just can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So Ms. Ross, talk to us with your beautiful blue rose there. <laughs> What is some takeaways, some comments, concerns? Let us hear your voice. Hello? Okay, so we're going to use this as an example as to why it's very important to not have an avatar because when you're called upon, when you're asked to engage and you don't, in everybody's minds, you're not even there. You're, you're probably doing dishes, you're probably doing laundry, you're doing something, you're not present. And that is a negative thing that happens on Zoom calls when that happens. Because again, people will do what they see you do. If you invite people to our webinar or our training or anything, and you're called upon to get feedback or, or a testimony or something, and you don't respond, the people that you invited and the people that other people invited also see that. And that is a detriment to the power of doing the Zoom calls. So this is exactly why I always, when I'm on a Zoom call, you see my face, I don't use an avatar and I'm very present because I want to be looked at as a leader. Not only that, I want to inspire other people to do the same. And it's, it's, very, it's very good when we all do that because we will be looked at as a team of people that is present, that is aware, that is emotionally, um, physically, and mentally engaged in their success as a person coming on. We are in different time zones. Mm -hmm. um, I just got home from church. And so you see me making chicken salad. If y'all want to come over for some chicken salad sandwiches afterwards, you're more than welcome to do that. But um, yes, you're going to see me being busy because I haven't been home very long. And I apologize, but I'll put myself off of video and sound. Right. Yeah. So this is another thing is, again, it's your business. Um, you know the times in advance. Now, life gets in the way, you go shopping, you got church, you have other things going on. But if you can mentally prepare yourself every day during those times of our Zoom calls, then it'll almost be a habit that this is my time for my business. I got to grow my business. This is what I'm dedicated to. And this is what I have to do to get, the, to get things done. 
And believe me, this is like college. We're not going to be on your back and tell your parents you didn't show up and blah, blah, blah. If you don't show up, you don't get the education. If you don't get the education, you don't grow and evolve. You don't grow and evolve, your, your business will go in, will go nowhere. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna wind up finding another business who may seem like the grass is greener over there. But if you just took the time to dedicate yourself to the particular times that we are building business together, we will succeed as a unit and as a team and take this business way further than we ever thought we could. But it takes each individual to play their part. Yep. So with that being said, I think we did enough for tonight. I, like I said, it's about 4.56 my time, Eastern Standard. We've been here for about almost an hour. I will have this recorded. I'm recording it now. I'm going to edit like the first part because it was like I saw that at 3.30. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to cut off the full um, half hour waiting time and uh, up until now. So you're not you know, waiting for such a long time. But um, before we leave, just want to thank you all for showing up. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to do another training. It'll be similar to this one, but every week is going to be a different segment of how to get the mindset or a particular way to do your research or something along the lines of making sure you understand more of how to build your business correctly. And that's my, that's my um, commitment to you as um, uh, fellow business owners, uh, fellow entrepreneurs, fellow people that want to be rich, <laughs> people, but more important, people that want to help other people, whether it's with our service or our opportunity. I want to thank you all for showing up and have a great night. Enjoy your chicken. <laughs> and I will see you all if you make an appointment with me or on Sunday at our next training. Have a good night, guys. You too, Gerald. Thanks for everything. You guys. Thanks, Gerald. Have a good night. Thanks, Gerald. Mm -hmm. Good night.